found this when I was tidying up, and it's called Thomas McNabb, The Half You Never Knew. Is it any interesting? Is it? I don't remember writing this. Apparently it's from when I was about 15 years old, so about 16 years ago, and I thought it would be funny to read it out. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm a writer, as you can see, and now I'm writing about my life. The most important things happened to me when I started John Smeaton Community High School, which is now getting ready for a third head teacher. Since I left, about a hundred teachers quit, but I can still see Mrs. Croom and my old RE teacher working there until time ends, plus that other English teacher. I wonder sometimes why I left, but then I think of all the great things I'd have missed if I hadn't. Chapter 1 All you need is love, 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 love. Will I ever get any back? September 1997 I started high school wanting to be a spy, but that soon faded when I realised how nice everyone was. I introduced myself to Lee. He introduced me to his friends, Nicola and Claire, and through them I later got to know Rachel and Stephen. Yep, I had been accepted into a group. I dubbed us mates, like the TV show, friends. But after one year, the group sort of cracked and... Well, I'll explain that later. We had one year of fantastic fun. After a huge fight that me, Rachel and Nicola got into with Vicky, Simone and their misunderstood third wheel, Katrina. We kept getting closer all the time after that. I went Christmas shopping with Nicola and went to see Deep Impact with her and Rachel for my 12th birthday. Me and Lee were always close so we didn't have to do things like that. Claire and Stephen were strangers to me in the beginning but later on I would realise that Claire was the best of them all. I don't know how it happened but when it did it hit me like a meteorite. Rachel and I had gotten extremely close and that could only lead to one her. I really fancied her. Back then, I was all for anything that would just get me that little bit closer to her. Sometimes she must have been in that watery hole. Denial. September 1998. In year 8, I was too busy staring at Rachel. It got to the point where I would have a tear roll down my cheek because I was with her and couldn't be with her. I did have a lifeline though. During a French trip, me, Rachel and Lee were the only ones of the group who didn't go. And I asked a stupid question during lunchtime. Do you think by the year 2000 you will be going out with someone from our class? Rachel said don't know, Lee said no, and I said yes. They were all like who, who? But I couldn't tell Rachel. So there, I told Lee. Well, he actually guessed. Told you it was obvious. So, whenever I felt like bursting out, I love Rachel! I love Rachel! I could just talk to Lee. March 15th, 1999. A Monday. This, in my mind, would be the day I told Rachel how I felt. She was coming over to my house, and we were just going to hang out. Tomorrow I went into hospital for two months, and I knew it was now or never. About half of the three hours she was there for, we just hugged and basically chatted about things. We each had bought the witch single, Blame on the Weatherman. I got CD1, and she got CD2. It was nearly time for her to leave, 
but I was too gutless to tell her how I felt. Then she went. The goodbye we shared was amazing. I think she kissed me on the head. And I thought if I could kiss her back. But her hair had got in the way. And before I could force another goodbye, she'd gone. She knew I had something to tell her, but when I couldn't get it out, she told me to tell Lee to tell her. So I did that. March 17th, Wednesday. I managed to talk to both Lee and Rachel today. Lee had said, he said what I told him to say, which was that I like you. When I talked to Rachel, she didn't say anything or sound any different. It was to be the last time I talked to Lee. Rachel, however, visited me when I was in isolation. I imagine it wasn't very nice to see me all bloodshot-eyed and bald. Parentheses, I was having chemotherapy. I don't know why I've not written that. <laughs> no, 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 not very interesting part of my life, the chemotherapy. What was interesting was my feelings for Rachel, a girl. She sent me a card that read, All My Love. Back then I thought this meant something special, but it was just a card. June 2nd, 1999, my 13th birthday. Technically I was still supposed to be in unclose contact with people, but that didn't stop me getting up and singing on the karaoke. It was a cappella, blame on the weatherman. I don't remember, but I was probably thinking about Rachel. Exactly, you were probably thinking of you definitely were. Why would you do that? A cappella. In front of a group. In front of like a hundred people. At 13. Singing Blame It On The Weatherman. A girl. By a, a song by a girl group. November 1999. Even though my heart was still pining for Rachel, another dilemma had unfolded. It started when me and Nicola had a particularly boring RE lesson, so we decided to write messages to each other. One thing led to another, and I previously had told her about me fancying Rachel, and she sprung it on me that she fancied me. Okay, freaky. I was totally not ready to move on from Rachel, and we continued to message to write each other. I can tell that she regretted what she had just done. I couldn't say back at you, oh, I'm sorry, but I don't feel the same way because I've, as you've read, I'm gutless. So I went off for one week to Disneyland. <laughs> and when I came back, I tried to tell Nicola that I liked her too, but as you read, I'm really gutless. So things went back to normal. Thanks to Nicola, I'd gotten over Rachel and moved on. Yes, my heart had locked and targeted another pretty lady. What the f Yes, my heart had locked on and targeted another pretty lady. Am I that shallow? I don't even have time to be single. <laughs> you were never you were never in a relationship. You were single throughout the entire entirety of high school. Back then I think I must have had some sort of weird, everything looks beautiful glasses. That's the only explanation. <laughs> March 2000. When I came back to year 9, there was a new girl. Oh, this just gets painful. There was a year 9 quiz team on a Tuesday lunch times, and at first I'd been promised into the group of Lee, Claire and Stephen. But surprise, I got pushed out. So Amy invited me to her quiz team with Matthew. We won on the off chance that Lee's brain fell asleep and I really bonded with her. At Christmas, my closest friends there were now Amy and her friend Amy. Nobody of the original group of mates would accept her, but I was like, F you, I like this person. So lunchtimes basically just consisted of me, Amy and Amy, chatting and laughing, while everyone else were like, Oh, I need to finish the extra credit on my homework. 
Nobody was ever talking like that. <laughs> In, oh, this is kind of the depressing part. Yeah, th this, this is where it gets depressing. In geography, we started a little task which began when a plane crashes and it's you and four other people. You've got all the supplies to survive, but do you travel 45 miles to the nearest life or do you wait by the plane for help? Somehow I got paired with Vicky, Simone and Matthew, aka the Matthew from the quiz team, who didn't like me. And I thought it'd be best if they shot out. Oh. Vicky, Simone and Matthew all thought it was best if they shot me to save food for themselves. But when Amy came back, she was put into my group and she sh she saw the vicious beginning of the bullying that would make me leave John Smear. In hindsight, wasn't that vicious. Was it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I guess back then it was, but now I'm just like, I really would like to John Malkovich my own head and watch what it was like knowing what I know now, because I don't think it was that much of a big deal, but back then it was a huge deal. I mean, for a 13 year old to basically have everyone said, you know, we want to kill you, theoretically, hypothetically, in a plane crash shoot you to survive. At the beginning of geography we would wait to go inside by the lockers. No, 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 there were no lockers in high school. That's one of the things that in primary school, my impression of high school is that you would get a locker. We never got lockers. Um, there were no lockers. Um, I, I don't know where we, where we waited, but it was somewhere outside in the hall by no lockers, but I wrote. We would wait to go inside geography by the lockers. Amy had been with our group for two lessons and had seen the bullying that went on. She saw me slumped on the bench dreading entering the classroom and she sat down next to me and told me that she knew what I felt. The bell rang and everybody went in but I stayed still. She said, come on, and I got up, and she put her arm around me for comfort just before we went in. She was the only person who knew about the bullying, particularly because she was the only one not joining in. See, there were seven people who would always start a slagging match towards me. Of course, there was Rachel and Claire who I sat with, and Stephen and Lee next to me, but they were all too proud to be seen standing up for me. Except Claire, who wasn't a big of a talking person anyway, so she had an excuse. But the others would sit back. I hope at least one person in that room knew what it felt like. I hope it was Amy. But hoping achieves you jack in this world. So it was time something was done. End of chapter. That's all I, that's all she wrote. I don't know why I deemed that important to write down. I I am one of those people that kept a diary. Um, kind of still do keep a diary. Um, and it's weird the things that you focus in on as being important. And like all the other stuff that actually was important, like hospital treatment and getting ill and, you know, possibly having a cure for my disease and then it not working and then getting um, osteoporosis and being in a wheelchair. None of that, none of that made it into this, which is quite, quite an interesting story, but I just did not find it interesting. I was too busy focusing on girls. Girls! Multiple girls! And I'm gay. 
super, super gay. Like, so much wasted time. So much wasted time. <laughs> but I hope you found that entertaining. Um, if you did, um, give me just a little like and I'm going to do more in response, more excerpts from my diaries.